I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to today's discussion, which is on the OSPF router ID or RID. So this is good viewing for CCNA candidates and CCNP candidates, especially working on the BSCI. We've got a typical hub and spoke network configuration here. Router 1 is our hub, 2 and 3 are the spokes. But what we're really interested in today is this neighbor ID. Certainly you're familiar with the output of show IP OSPF neighbor, and if not, you need to be before you take either one of those exams I mentioned. And here we've got something called a neighbor ID, and notice that those numbers do not match the downstream addresses of that particular router, of each router that is. So we're going to go to routers 2 and 3, our spokes, and see which is which here and how these particular values were arrived at. Because not only do you need to know this somewhat unusual default for the exam and you need to know how to hard code an OSPF RID as well, but you need to work, you will be working with these in the real world. And there's also a slightly undesirable side effect you need to know about before you hard code an OSPF RID. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now let's go down to router 2 and just take a look at the config. And we have an Ethernet interface with an IP address on it. And that should look familiar. That's what this router's OSPF RID was. We've got a serial zero interface with an IP address on it. You can see what that is. Those are the only two addresses on here. I'll scroll back up for a moment because you always want to look for loopbacks up here at the top of the config, but there aren't any. And down here near the bottom, notice that our OSPF configuration is only running on the 172.12.123.0 network. That's the only network that's OSPF enabled. But when I run show IP OSPF, the very first line tells us, remember these are routing processes, very important that number is a process number. Look at that ID. That's kind of odd because we just looked at the configuration. We saw two IP addresses. One is enabled with OSPF, one interface, the other is not. But it's the IP address of the interface that is not OSPF enabled that's being used as the OSPF router ID. It sounds kind of odd. It is a little odd at first, but you just have to get used to this rule. If there are no loopbacks on a router, and in this case there weren't any, then the highest IP address on any physical interface on this router will be used as the OSPF RID even if the address is assigned to an interface that is not OSPF enabled. And I know that's counterintuitive, but on exam day and in the real world, it's a rule you have to keep in mind. So we've seen that proven here, right there with show IP OSPF. But what if we have a loopback address? Let's go over to router 3 and run a show config, and you'll see that on this particular router, I did configure a loopback interface. And there it is, and that should look familiar because according to router 1, this is the OSPF RID of this router. Before we verify that with show IP OSPF, let's look at the other IP addresses. And we only have one other. We don't have an IP address on the Ethernet interface. We do have one on the serial zero interface. And notice that the serial interface's IP address is much higher than that of the loopback. And just to make sure you know that I'm not fooling you, you can see there's nothing here on S1 either. And again, with router OSPF, the only network that we have OSPF enabled is that 172.12.123.0 network. So, why then is this non-OSPF enabled interface that has such a low IP address, why is that being used as the OSPF RID when this address is assigned to an interface that is OSPF enabled and is much higher than the IP address on the loopback because the rule is if there is a loopback interface on a router if there's a single one then that IP address is going to be used for the OSPF RID by default. If you have multiple loopbacks the highest IP address assigned to the loopback will be the OSPF RID but again just as we saw in router 2 the, route, the interface with the IP address being used as the OSPF RID does not have to be OSPF enabled. 
So that's just a little extra rule you got to wrap your head around. It's counterintuitive at first, I certainly admit, because you think, well, you know, it's got to be an interface should be OSPF enabled to be have its address used as the RID, but that is not the case. Now, let's go back to router 2 and run show IP OSPF neighbor. And you'll see the neighbor IP ID address of the downstream router, the hub, router 1, is 172.12.123.1. Let's say we want to change that, and there are reasons to do that. You'll run into some of these in your more advanced studies, but for right now we really need to know how to change this value. And you do it right here under the router OSPF process, and you do it with the router ID command. And you'll notice iOS help explains it very clearly. This is the OSPF router ID in IP address format. That's how you want to put it in. So let's say we want to change it to all ones. Now this is interesting and you don't see this in a lot of manuals out there and a lot of documentation. It's going to say reload or use clear IP OSPF process command for this to take effect. So even though we just put it in there if we run show IP OSPF right now, what are we going to get? What's it going to say? It's going to say that the ID is 172.12.123.1. Now we could reload the router, but let's run that clear command because obviously this isn't something we do at work very often. And notice here, this is a great default answer. Anytime that the default answer to a question that a Cisco router is asking you is no, you better be careful. Uh, you might want to take a step back and make sure you really want to do it. But we're going to say yes. And we're going to reset the processes and you can see that the neighbor relationships came down. When they come back up, which is going to be a little while because we're on a broadcast, an NBMA network actually, so it's going to take a little while. When these come back up, as you can see they're in init right now, when they come back up, router 1's router ID will be 1111. Alright, so I paused the video there and you can see the adjacencies came up and there are our neighbors but now let's run show IP OSPF and you can see that the ID now has been successfully changed. So that's just something to keep in mind. You've got to do one of two things when you change an OSPF RID. You're either going to have to reload that router or clear the processes, the, o the OSPF process, that is. It's a good command to know, uh, but definitely not one you want to work with in production networks unless you want all your adjacencies to come down. But you do have to do one of those two things to make a router ID command uh, in OSPF take effect. It's not something we have to do a lot in Cisco land, but we do have to do it on occasion. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. I invite you to come out to the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. Over 250 free Cisco tutorials, practice exams, videos, daily questions on the blog, all kinds of great stuff. And if you want to come out straight to the tutorials page, that address is on the screen right now. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.